Hello and welcome back to Mindspans. I'm Craig and thanks for joining me today. We are continuing our episodes around dreams and lucid dreaming, and wake induced lucid dreaming and all sorts of stuff. So um, hopefully you've been practicing uh, your reality checks. Uh, if you remember from the first episode, if you haven't seen it, go watch the first episode. I give you some reality checks. And also just if you Google reality checks, there's a ton of people. There's actually a great group called the Lucid Hive and they have a regular discussion about lucid dreaming. And so they're awesome. So what I want you to do today is sort of just chill. And I'm going to tell you a story because uh, the first time that I was able to have an out-of-body experience through my meditative practices and then I'm going to compare that to the first time I was able to achieve what's called a wake induced lucid dream where you uh, move from a conscious state uh, to a dream state without actually going to sleep and so just to give you a sense of how this all works and then in other videos we'll go back and walk through the basics but let's take a little stretch and sort of get in the mood a little bit take a deep breath in through your nose stretch to the sky smile a little bit hold it and then release relax your shoulders relax your jaw and we're good to go so I'm going through this deep meditative practice and I meet some guy randomly and he talks to me about like crystals and, and uh, out of body stuff and you know, so I'm like, fine, great, that sounds cool. And so I go through uh, his process and it's basically, it's sort of like a Kundalini awakening process similar to that uh, in the sense that you you go into a very, very deep meditation. So you go relaxing your body and your breathing, and then you start to sort of unblock channels. Uh, and it can be pretty scary, actually. So I highly recommend you talk to someone about it if you start to go into this process. There's a lot of weird stuff that happens. So one is you, you do get this really heavy energy buzz as you get deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, if you're new to meditation, it's oftentimes like fears. If you have deep fears or other things, they're going to bubble up to the surface and you're going to feel that stuff. And so it takes a while to get through all that. Um, some people it takes a long time, but it's good if you have a guide, uh, certainly you can, you can uh, message me uh, and there are many other people out there or, or an analyst or somebody, but it's good to have that coach. Um, or at least someone to talk to as that stuff happens so you can figure out you know what's going on in your body and so you do get this like energy surge and you get hot and so things get sort of freaky and then eventually you move your way through all this stuff and you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and what you do is that energy as it builds up because it sort of builds and it, allow it to sort of move around the outside of your body um, and sort of lay back into it. Uh, don't try to fight that energy. And just, it's like, zzz, like a buzzing, like electricity, buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. And then what you want to do is try to channel it and imagine it all coming out through your head. And sometimes nothing happens. Actually, most of the time, nothing happens. But one time in particular, it was like an explosion and it really was um, it was frightening uh, the first time so it was like an explosion and it was like bright light and I was like I was getting sucked like the g-force was enormous and I was getting sucked through this tunnel and and next thing it was like total quiet and I was just floating above the bed and and I was flying around and then I realized I thought I would never get back to my body, which is very normal too. And, uh, and then I, I remembered that I had uh, grounded myself. It's a whole process of grounding yourself so that there's sort of a line like this magical line between your 
spirit body and your regular body and and that's how you get back in and then I get sucked back in and I was like whoa that really happened and um, but what I also later um, and I, I've been able to do that I don't know I don't try it that often because I moved to lucid dreaming because I think it is a form of lucid dreaming I think it's it's this it's basically the same sensation as awake induced lucid dream is so you basically go through the same process when you're trying to do awake induced lucid dream which basically is you're tricking your body to think it's going to sleep and so when your body goes to sleep it releases a chemical that paralyzes you so that you don't walk and do crazy stuff in your dreams because your brain is fully active in your dreams and they know that and they've studied that uh, but your body is paralyzed and so it's called sleep paralysis and so you go through this very very deep process and instead of in the out of body process where you're trying to create sort of this energy flow in in the dream process you're trying to inject yourself into a dream scene and there's a couple of ways to do that so and we'll talk a lot more about that but basically when you get deeper and deeper and you just sort of look your eyes are closed obviously and you're looking sort of at that lens behind your eye um, you'll start to see colors and images appear as you get deeper and deeper and you just want to be an observer you want to observe this whole process and as those images get more and more vivid it's sort of like surfing if you've ever surfed or even body surfed or been by waves or anything like that it's it's sort of like that it's like you got to catch the wave at just the right moment and and sort of inject yourself into the dream sometimes i use a trick like falling a book like through a hatch in the bottom of the bed into the scene sometimes uh it helps to sort of have someone in the dream reach out to you and then you sort of grab them into the dream uh, sometimes imagining yourself running and jumping into the dream uh, anyway there's many many styles of doing this and it, whatever works for you we try the point is you're trying to sort of catch this wave and then ride the wave into the dream and you're gonna have to just try things that work for you but if you read all about this stuff there are certain things that work the things I just talked about and others that do work uh, most of the time and so and what happens is again it's like it's this surge of energy it's the most incredible experience um, it's really like you just caught a 50-foot wave and it's just that you go from having total quiet to like you're pulling like 10 G's being thrust uh, through something into this new environment and you sort of plop into it and when you first get there this is then it takes a whole time to learn how to stabilize yourself unfortunately but it's so worth it and so when you first get there is the first time you it's really different because now you're you're not feeling like you're out of your body you're very much convinced yourself that you're entered into a dream state and so there's not that fear uh, that you fear when you when I went through that out-of-body experience but it is um, like you're not stable in other words it's blurry and you have sort of half in the dream and half not in the dream and it's like everything's sort of not crystal clear and so there are things once you get in there that you can do uh, and everyone has their own stuff but like if you grab the if you engage the dream if you speak loudly like say I'm in the dream that's great and you're screaming hey I'm in the dream and you are stamping on the ground or some people spin they try or grab grass or if there's sand or whatever it is you just sort of grab things and engage the dream but not too much <laughs> it's a very you gotta it's a you'll learn your own balance but because if you if you get too controlling in your dream your conscious mind gets too active and then you wake up uh, 
and you just sort of lose it. So you have to sort of allow things to happen and gesture for things to happen, uh, but stay engaged. And so you, you're keeping your brain right on the cusp of dream state and lucidity. And what happens over time is you do get better at it. Like everything else, you get better at it. And you learn what works for you and what doesn't work uh, to keep you stabilized. And it's amazing, like you can fly, you can jump, you can, I mean, anything you can ever imagine. Um, you can go meet people that you want to talk to, that you've never, you know, presidents or whatever, or famous people um, to learn. And it's just, uh, it's an incredible, incredible uh, experience. And it's like having a whole, someone says, here, here's a whole nother life. And in this life, you can do whatever you want. You do whatever you want. And it's just, uh, it's fascinating. And you learn just so much about yourself. And it is like, when you think about, I've talked a little bit about quantum stuff, where in the, in the quantum subatomic world, particles, waves, what have you, as there is an observation of the particles, they go from having unlimited possibilities to they collapse into sort of the perceived reality at any given point a trillion times a second or whatever it is. So in a dream world, it's much more like that. It's like, so all your work that you've done or should be doing anyway, or want to do on being clear and focused and not having attachments and, you know, letting go of your fears and all this kind of stuff that we do through this meditative process makes your lens extremely clear so that when you're in this dream state, you have a much more, um, I don't want to use the word control because it's not that, but it's a clarity that allows the dream to unfold in a way that's not completely chaotic, um, which can also happen. So that happens also. Um, and you got to understand that sometimes weird stuff happens. It's sort of scary and you got to really know in your mind, maybe you do another reality check while you're in the dream, just to double check stuff that this is not real. And, um, but it's really, an incredible experience, but it's much more, if you think about how they define the quantum world, dream state and how you interact with a dream is much more like that. So it's much more attuned to how we define the way the universe works than I would say this world and the physical world, uh, which is very solid, you know? So it, it, I would say like this world is sort of a derivative of that world in some respects, because this one is solid and linear that one is sort of organic. So things just sort of, as you think about stuff, they sort of evolve like that. And so, which makes it very sort of unstable in some respects, but it's also really cool and really fun and it's an exploration and, and it's really great. So I'm gonna leave you with that. Uh, we're gonna go into many, many more details on the process and also, uh, try to answer questions that people have asked me in in the uh, in the past uh, as they've tried to learn this process and certainly have I've continued to study and continue to learn from lots of people so I wish you great dreams remember do your exercises um, push against walls slowly push against your hands slowly look at clocks quickly when you do those stuff in dreams clock changes, time changes, uh, your hands sort of mush through each other, or they mush through the wall, uh, or you can walk backwards into a wall, although some people might think you're crazy. Um, in a dream, you can, you'll can you walk right through the wall. And uh, so it's sort of fun stuff. So have a great time, enjoy this process, read up about it and comment, let me know what you think follow me, subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and be patient with your practice, be patient with yourself and be patient with everyone around you. We're all on our own path, our own journey. We do stuff in our own time. So 
So just be cool with that. Have a great day. And thank you.